wanted to display a web page in your app without having to open the browser on your phone? Do you have a payment flow on your website that you don't want to re-implement in your app? I'm Emily with the Flutter team, and I'm here to tell you about the WebView plugin, which just so conveniently helps you accomplish all of those things. Using WebViews is really simple. First, add the WebView package to your pub spec. Then, in your code, you can specify an initial URL parameter for what page you want to display first. You can also optionally enable or disable JavaScript in your WebView with the JavaScript mode parameter. By default, JavaScript is disabled. Finding out any interesting bits and controlling your WebView is all done through these surprisingly named WebView controller objects. When the WebView is fully built, it returns this controller through a callback. The controller allows you to programmatically modify the web view or access properties like the current URL being displayed. To see how all this works in practice, I wrote a simple Wikipedia browsing app that allows me to bookmark pages for later. This allows my inner perfectionist to keep track of all the articles I need to read in order to fulfill my lifelong quest to read all of Wikipedia. I believe in myself. Web views are just like any other widget in Flutter. You can layer other widgets on top of them. In my wiki browsing app, the floating action button hovers over the web view, complete with the shadow effect you would expect with the button. Also, when the drop-down menu from the app bar opens, it partially covers the web view, just like any other widget underneath the menu. To implement this, we want to use a completer and a future builder. In the class, I declare a completer instance variable, which is like setting a placeholder for the web view controller. Then, in the callback, we tell our program that the web view has been built, and we now have a working web view controller. We can check if we have a working WebView controller by calling controller.isCompleted or using a future builder with the controller.future. Using a future builder allows us to build new UI components like the floating action button for adding favorites only after we have a working WebView controller. With that working WebView controller, we can get information about the WebView, like the current URL the WebView is displaying when we want to save it to our favorites. Flutter determines the priority that widgets receive gesture events like finger taps through a system called the Gesture Arena. Web views are no different, but they tend to be low on the prioritization list of getting gesture events. This allows Flutter to control the gestures that get sent to the web view in which Flutter captures for itself. By default, a web view only responds to a gesture if no other widgets have claimed it. But you can more proactively claim gestures for your web view with the gesture recognizers. An example of when you might want to use gesture recognizers is if you have a web view inside of a list view. Both could respond to scrolling gestures, but if you do nothing, the list view will get the gesture and the web view won't scroll. If you watch the boring Flutter development show, this exact scenario comes up in the Hacker News Reader app that we develop. To make the web view scrollable inside the list view, I capture the vertical drag gesture with the gesture recognizers parameter. Gesture Recognizers takes a set of all the gestures that you want to capture. And don't be scared by that factory object. It's basically a glorified builder method. Also, you'll see I use Dart's cascade operator, which means I return the calling object, which in this case is the set with the new item added. This saves me a line of code so I don't have to declare the set in a separate line. The end result allows you to scroll both widgets depending on where the touch event occurs. If the web view is inside a widget that only captures gestures you don't care about, no gesture detector is needed. An example of that is a web view inside of a page controller or a tab bar. The page controller only responds to horizontal drag gestures, and if you just want the web view to be able to scroll vertically, you don't need to add a gesture recognizer. If you have multiple web views in your app, you might need to use keys. What are keys? Keys are those optional parameters on just about every widget constructor in the Flutter code base. If you have multiple stateful widgets of the same type that are added, removed, or reordered, you want to supply that key parameter. As it turns out, WebView is a stateful widget, since it keeps track of the current page and the browser history. So if you have a collection of web views that you're adding or removing, you can add a local key parameter. Similarly, if you're doing something more complicated that uses the same web view across two views, like with the hero widget, you want to use a global key so that Flutter knows the two web views are actually the same and doesn't try to re-render the second. That was a really quick look at using keys. But if you want to learn more about keys, it just so happens that someone who looks an awful lot like me made a video about them, and you can check it out. 
For more documentation and to learn more about all the cool things you can do with Flutter, go to flutter.io. Hey, if you thought that was cool, you should check out this or check out that. But don't forget to subscribe to the Flutter YouTube channel.